Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking a bit about the basics of automation. So anything that you're doing very manually in a repetitive fashion, right? Like imagine like a, the same sequence of actions for each icon here on this page, you would be doing always the same thing with expecting always the same outcome. That's a good candidate to be automated. So you could do that by a custom plugin, or you could use plugins like Automator or more recently Figlet which I'm being becoming like more and more a fan of as it's more of like code instead of uh, visual scripting. Uh, but here's the thing, you need to know some coding basics, right? Uh, and you would think like, oh, okay, that, that, that kind of like ruins my chances of automating something. Uh, I would say no. I would say, especially if you have developers in your team, uh, you can actually convince them to, to help you out a little bit here. Uh, and I think you should show them this video. They will quickly realize that, hey, this is not going to take me so long and this is going to help you a lot. And so you might be able to actually convince like someone that knows a little bit more coding than you do to actually help you. Or you could just learn some basic coding to be able to do automations yourself or to do plugins yourself. Uh, doing plugins, yes, a little bit more of a stretch because it requires a little bit extra knowledge. But you can definitely use Automator or or, or or Figlet to, to achieve these results. So let's talk about the very specific use case. This is something a friend of mine was, was asking me about yesterday, and we tried doing it in some other ways uh, via like the, the native renaming, uh, when, when you use the Figma renaming. Uh, so it didn't work and it didn't work because uh, we had this Fantasm icon component with variants, and then you wanted to rename the instances, for for end of the developers, right? So they needed to have icon, iPhone, the name actually of the icon, right? And 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 if you look here on the left, you see that all of the instances are just called font awesome icon. Uh, so you don't have that information here, even if you click in like you would do on variants where you might have like here on the right, like icon name. If it was a variant inside the component, you'd have this information on it. But because it's an instance, it just says font awesome icon. So now we, we need this, right? We need this icon name. We have it, uh, but we cannot access it unless we do it via a plugin or via Automator or Figlet. Uh, let me kick it off with uh, with Figlet. Let's run Figlet. Like, let me show you where it is normally. Like, so you'd come here, uh, you would search for Figlet, then you find it here, so you can run it. Uh, let me run it. There we go. So think about Figlet, you can create your different Figlets. There's a community and I actually published like these two that I already created to the community. You might be able to find them there. Uh, but let's let's go inside and you can start seeing this is pretty much just code. This is pretty much as JavaScript, right? Um, so what are you doing here? What we're doing here is we're picking the current selection. So I, I'm, I'm storing that inside a variable. And, and the, the Figma API endpoint is like figma.currentpage.selection. So dot Figma is like the base of most uh, things that you can do with the, the Figma API. Then you have the current page, of course, because it needs to be on the current page. And then I have selection, will, which will give you either, normally will give you like an array, and an array is just like a group of, of objects, right? A group of things that are inside that selection. Uh, and then what you need to do is like a loop. Uh, you could do some other types of loop. I prefer this type of loop, array from, current selection, and then for each, and then I'm naming them items, you do certain actions, right? Uh, and so here I, I just want to do like, I want to get the property value of icon name. So I just do item.component properties, icon name value, and then value, right? Uh, let me do you like a console log so that you can check out what I'm actually doing here. Console log. And before this actually runs an action, let's comment that out. Let's log the item, which is each element in this array. Let's run it. And you see here on the console, uh, just an heads up if you want to open the console. You come here to the plugins development open console. Um, so we got the instance, right? So we have the item, and then you see all of these properties inside what we call an object. 
very well nested. We want component properties. So this is where you would go. You either go to the API to figure out if what what do you actually want, or you just like read over and, and try to figure out, oh, what do I want? I want the component properties. Let me find what if there's something called that or similar. So you can see here inside component properties, you have the icon name and then you have the actual value, which is the actual icon name. So if I now uncomment this bit and select all of them, what happens is, is as soon as I run this, boom, instantly have all the names correctly uh, set up, right? It was pretty much instant. How long would this take you manually depends on how fast you are at doing like repetitive stuff. For some people it might be 15 minutes, for other people it might be an hour. Uh, imagine saving an hour just by having this. Yes, it took me almost an hour to get this automation. I was feeling like uh, a bit bored. Uh, I, I'm, I'm between jobs. So I was like, okay, I'll help, I'll help you do this uh, even if it's for the next time. Uh, and then I can maybe use it on the video. So win-win. Let me just undo all of that and show you Automator. So let's do the quick way to run a plugin, command forward slash Automator, and then you press enter. Cool, now we got Automator. You see that they have automations here and I have this one that was on Figlet already set up. So get the current selection as you saw storing the current selection and then doing a loop. So for each, for each element in the array, do something. I want to show you just something. So if you click this info icon there, you see that on this for each action, you have two variables that come by default. One of them is item. So again, the item for each item on the array. And then you have index, which is just the location of each of those items in the array, starting with zero. So I want to show you the console log, right? I add another action. So here's how you'd build the script with, with uh, Automator. I want the console log, which, I mean, I think by now you already realize the console log is just churning out things here on the developer console so that you can make sure that you're calling the right things. Then I'm gonna select something and then it, I'm gonna do the two curly brackets. That's how you do it in Automator item close with two curly brackets and run it. And then you see, what do you see? Like instead of that organized uh, tree of, of stuff like that we normally call an object, you get like just an object in JSON form in just text format, right? So you cannot navigate this. This is why I, I kind of like now nowadays, I, I figure out what I need to call from the API via, via Figlet. And then I just copy over <laughs> that, that name that uh, string of, of, of API endpoints over to Automator or much, much, much easier. And you can see this one all got, got renamed, but now let's undo that. Good. Now we have the entire selection for each, set the layer name, icon, and then the curly bracket for the, the API endpoints that you need to be calling on. Let's run it. It's, it's go, it's doing its thing. Yes. And then it says finishing in 3.3 seconds. So here's the downfall of automator. You saw how with Figlet it was instant on automator. It takes a while because it's probably doing like some more stuff on the background. Keep that in mind. It took a little bit longer, but you see that everything was renamed the same as, as you did with Figlet. Uh, the reason why I think it's, it's, Automator still has its uses is Figlet might be a bit scary, even though if I just save the thing and I tell people, oh, just just run this, right? That's that's okay. But the, as soon as they need to start doing something, they need to understand the code. With Automator, no, they can come here and they can be like, uh huh, for each and set layer name. Oh, maybe, but maybe I want to do something else. Maybe I want to go. Uh, inside and call it something else with like shape. And so now you could do that here. Like you would be able to set layer name. No, you could do like find layers, right? And then you can see 
find all layers where the value is vector right then now you have you have that and then you'd put let me just say layer name that's quicker to write and then you nest this right you see it's easier to nest things it's easier to unnest them and then let's set the name to shape fingers crossed but it worked ah it actually worked better better than than it should have okay cool live demos um so what else did i want to i wanted to remind you that i've exported this as a, as a json file uh which uh, which enables you to just check the video description download the the automation and play a, a little bit with it uh so let me just get rid of this so that i don't forget and then when you want to import it you'd start with this empty uh the free version of automator only allows for one automation at once so i hope you only have one but you'd be able to import from json get the file that you download here and play around with it with it uh, for the figlet you already know that it's in the community let me close the, the that panel over there and that's pretty much it i hope you liked it uh, I hope it got you like excited to try it out yourself uh, or maybe convince someone else to help you out with this. Uh, I have other videos about automations. Uh, just check them out. Uh, if you like the video, click that like. You, this now is the YouTube part of, of the video. Uh, consider subscribing me if you like the video because then you get the newer ones. Also let me know in the comments uh, what, what did you like, what other like repetitive things are you doing consider like letting me know like consider maybe like recording a small little video with with your problem and then maybe i can actually if it's easy help you uh, help you automate that or at least nudge you in the right direction so i hope that i see you next time bye bye